Okay, so recently I did a video on a Raspberry Pi 400 running Android, but with what looks like a desktop interface. I saw ETA Prime's video yesterday, which was an even better version. This is Prime OS. I put it on a 64 gig SD card, and uh, I've just put the SD card into Twister OS because I want to show a few things before I boot it up. So you can see how to download it on ETA Prime's channel and how to install it to an SD card. I was going to show how to uh, alter it for USB, overclock, and also expand the partition. So if I launch Gparted, pop the password in. So Gparted is a partition manager, and you can see here uh, I'm running Twister OS on this SSD. This is Prime OS on an SD card. So it's not using all of this space. So what you want to do is right click and resize. I've got a separate video on how to install Gparted and more about Gparted if you want to know about it. Uh, hit resize and then click the tick and apply. And it's probably safer to do this after you've run the operating system and done a few restarts uh, with Prime OS just to make sure everything is as it should be. So let's close that down and uh, let's have a look at the boot partition. So you can see all the bits grayed out are the partitions on the SD card. So let's double click on boot and config.txt. And you can see in here, I haven't tried these overclock settings yet. As it came as standard, uh, the overclock was at 1750 megahertz and also two on the over voltage. I've changed it to seven and 2147. So I've overclocked higher, uh, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work yet. I'm just gonna give it a try. The other bit worth looking at is uh, booting from SD card. So this is the default setting. Uh, so this is unchecked, but if you wanted to boot from USB, what you would do is put a hash there and you would delete that line. So then it reads DT overlay equals Raspberry Pi Android USB. Uh, but I am using an SD card, so I'm going to put it back to as it was. I can now save that and shut down. So now I can unplug my SSD drive and I'm going to boot that up with the SD card in. And as an OS, I think it looks really nice. Uh, I was really impressed with how well it works and how well it works with the Windows because I was struggling to try and get uh, resizable Windows. Um, but if I click on ADA64, we can have a look at how it's running. So if we go for CPU, uh, yeah, it's showing us 2200, which is the Pi does this. It, uh, if you put in 2147, it always reports it as 22. Um, but uh, yeah, the overclock is definitely working. And I looked in Android before, and uh, this is running Arch64, so it's running a 64-bit operating system, which is nice to see as well. We can check the thermals if we want to. So let's close that down. And the main thing is uh, a start bar, really, just like uh, many other desktop operating systems. So if we click on this bit here, you can see all of the apps show up. Uh, you can search apps, and you can launch apps from there. If we click on files, it comes up in a window rather than full screen, so a little bit different to what Android would normally do. Uh, in fact, if we open ADA64 again, uh, you can see that we've got windows and we can go full screen. But if we hover at the top, we can also put it back into a windowed state as well. Now, this software is in beta and uh, it does have a few issues with sometimes the screen kind of shakes a bit. Uh, but also I've had a few times when the operating system has kind of, uh, it's got stuck in a bit of a loop, but it doesn't seem to have been happening recently. Uh, and I've been installing loads of games and apps and playing around with it. But if we pick something like pictures and images, you can see the two images I've downloaded to use as desktop. So let's close these bits down and have a look at some of the other things. So this gives you notification center, but also notice if you put, two fingers on the trackpad and push up. That also gets you notification center and two fingers down does this as well. But you also have uh, these widgets which you can have individual settings and various other things on the desktop. So if I click on this, this will just go straight into sound settings. So if you regularly change sound settings, you have that option to have it on the desktop. Just right click the desktop and you've got widgets. This is where I got the clock. Uh, and also you can see there's an Apple Music widget which has been installed because I've installed Apple Music onto it. And you can see the setting shortcut. This is weird because if you click on it uh, or touch, press and hold, drag it to where you want it to be. So let's say here, it then asks you what you want it to be. 
So we could pick Wi-Fi if we regularly switch from Wi-Fi networks. Uh, we can pick display if we're often changing display settings, various different things, um, but you can customize it however you want. I won't put another one on there. What I really like is this one here, close all apps. Um, it definitely doesn't seem to like if you launch a game and then try and launch another game. Some games don't run. Unfortunately, for quite a while now on the Raspberry Pi, uh, GTA San Andreas and also GTA Liberty City Stories just doesn't boot. Um, but if we pick something like Max Payne, you'll see that it boots fine. Uh, it comes up with this sort of game interface where you've got various different information on there. So if I hit play, it launches the app in the normal way. If we go up to the top, we can also minimize it. Ah, and in this case it said this app is full screen locked. So it looks like you can only play this game full screen. So this game runs really well on this and uh, for an Android game, actually it looks pretty good full screen, I think. I was quite impressed with it and uh, the sound and everything is really nice. But let's quit out of that. So if I press the Windows key, it comes up with this menu. And I can go down to the bottom, click on the close all apps and close it. So it'd be rude not to try Amazon Prime Video on Prime OS, so I figured I would. Uh, you can see this opens in a window screen, not a full screen like the game did. Uh, and if I pick, let's pick something I can play briefly. A bit of Picard. So that seems to play absolutely fine. Obviously I can't play much of that. Apple Music was an interesting one. I've got a six months Apple Music free subscription. Uh, so I figured I'd install it and see what it did. Funnily enough, it doesn't work or recognize my HomePods, I guess, because it's Android. Uh, I just figured it would because it would just be a software thing. But if I close this down and if we pick a track, it gives me the option to play it uh, on my TV. My TV is a Sony TV with Chromecast. So if I click on that, that's going to then switch on my TV and it starts playing through my HomePod speakers and sounds great. And I can pause that and everything is nice and responsive. It really does behave very well and I can disconnect from my speakers. So stop casting and then it will play through my little Bose speaker. Sounds a little bit different to the HomePods. And let's close down Apple Music, but it's really responsive and works really well on Android. And just a brief interruption to say that I've just had a Raspberry Pad 5 arrive. This is a 5 inch screen that works with the Compute Module 4. I can get the lid off with one hand. And uh, yeah, it looks very interesting. So I'll be showing that in a separate video. Anyway, back to this. So I wanted to show uh, in the menu, there is a separate Raspberry Pi menu, an advanced one, which is uh, a very easy way to get into the settings for the Pi. So force rotation, governor on demand, so you can improve the performance. You can see the maximum frequency. Well, I overrode that because I overclocked it with the config.txt. Uh, you can switch between HDMI and headphone out and you can also boot into recovery from this mode as well. I'm going to show Roblox because uh, that runs okay on this. It would run better if I could get the resolution lower. I did try getting the resolution lower in config.txt, but I couldn't manage it. So it does launch pretty slow, but some of the games work alright on it. So let's just jump into a game. So let's see if we can look around. Oh, it hasn't picked up the... Oh yeah, it has picked up the controller. So we can look around with the right stick, and we can run around with the left stick. Actually, it is running a bit slow. Uh, it definitely runs better at 720 on Consta Kang's image, but uh, but it is working. Um, and uh, as I say, if we get lower resolutions in the future, maybe that will help. I did notice, by the way, uh, by accident, I just pressed F10, and uh, it came up with this menu. Now, I guess this is all to do with the gaming, but uh, yeah, interesting. Um, it's some sort of configuration. So D-pad, swipe. It does mention about being able to customize controls, and this is uh, about being able to use touchscreen games with a controller. So I maybe need to have a look at that in the future. But yeah, it looks interesting. Can we drag these about? Yeah, we can. We can drag these about, and somehow assign them. Yeah, I need to need to do that in a separate video, really. And yeah, this talks about the key mapping, but there is definitely something there. But it, in this, it says coming soon. So let's have a look at the YouTube app, which I've installed from the Play Store. And uh, video hardware isn't supported, but actually usually it works all right on Android. Let's play a bit of my video. So this is playing at 720, and uh, if I go full screen, uh, actually 720 is fine. 1080 does pause a bit, but uh, 720 is nice and smooth. 
Let's close that down. And go to the web browser. The web browser works pretty decent. Uh, I've had multiple tabs open, it's been fine. Uh, this is the link from ETA Prime's video uh, for the XDA forums, which takes you to the Prime OS website. Uh, if I scroll down, yeah, Prime OS download, so let's click on that. And there's loads of information about the OS here. Uh, if you scroll down, the download links are here and you can donate to the development. I also found this for x86 devices and uh, so I've downloaded it and I've just switched over to Twister OS, still on my Raspberry Pi, uh, just to show you the download. So if we click into the downloads folder, you could use a Windows computer or a Mac or any Linux distribution to write this. Uh, so too many operating systems in here. PrimeOSBeta.iso. So this is the one for an x64 and x86 computer. So I use Raspberry Pi Imager. Again, this program is available on pretty much all devices. Choose OS. Go down to Custom. We need to locate that ISO file. Prime OS Beta ISO. And hit Open. Then we need to choose our storage device. I haven't got one in there at the moment. But I've written it to a 64 gig Samsung bar. Uh, you can actually run it from that as a live device. So if I turn on the power on my little Melee Mini PC and I press F7 repeatedly, that takes me to a boot menu. I can select the Samsung drive and hit enter. And you can see it boots up into this and you can choose installation or run it live. So I chose installation and installed it to my SSD and it takes you all through the process and you can choose which drive you install it to from this menu. Uh, it all works very, very well, but I'm going to boot it up with the SSD drive. So I plugged in my 120 gig Kingdian drive and let's boot it up from that. So again, if I press F7, it gets me to this menu and you can see which one it is because it shows up as installed. So let's hit enter and you can see there's also uh, advanced options and there is a Vulkan experimental driver one there. Uh, that didn't work very well for me, so I'm just going to boot the ordinary version. And running on this X64 device, this runs 1080 YouTube absolutely fine uh, and, uh, and does feel nice and responsive. Games, however, because uh, Android is uh, an operating system that mainly runs on ARM processors, the gaming is actually, I think, slightly better on the Pi. Uh, I uh, couldn't get GTA Liberty City Stories to work, but Race Master works. So this is a touchscreen game and you can see it's in, uh, in portrait mode. But if I press and hold the left mouse button, uh, I can move the car around. Uh, it does suffer a bit from slowdown. Again, this is uh, an Android game, so designed for an ARM processor, but running on an X64 computer. So a more powerful PC would obviously be much better at this. This is only a Celeron J4125, so quite a basic processor, 8 gig of RAM. Um, so yeah, if you've got a graphics card in your computer, you may get a lot better gaming performance. But uh, I'm impressed nonetheless. So just to show you that it's pretty much the same product and uh, you can have it on either a Raspberry Pi or an X86 or an X64 computer. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.